Hello, my farmer friends. This is Corinna, and I am coming at you from my living room in Elmore, and I want to say, first of all, just welcome. Um, I'm a little nervous today because there are a lot more people in the group than there were a couple of weeks ago, thanks to the Farmer to Farmer podcast. So welcome to all the new faces. I'm really excited to grow this group and try to share my story and help you guys make some of those marketing advances that our farm has in the last couple of years. So today's uh, training is all about marketing funnels and I'm gonna teach this to you today because I feel like it's one of the first topics that you should really get your head around. Um, and before I get started, just a few housekeeping things. Um, number one is that I plan on uh, kind of going through the content first of all and then at the end if any of you hop on live I will answer those questions at the end so just go ahead and type your question in if you have one but just realize I'm not going to get to them until the end that way I can take this video someday in the future if I need to and kind of split the ends off and just have the content in the middle if I want to repost it somewhere else also I just realized that I did not turn the volume off of my phone. So let me do that real quick in case someone calls me while I'm on video. Hold on. Awkward. Let's do this. There we go. <laughs> that was a amateur mistake. So if you ever do a Facebook Live video, make sure you turn off the ringer on your phone. Okay, so um, today we're going to talk about the introduction to marketing funnels. And we are gonna talk about what is a marketing funnel, what's it gonna do for you, why do you need to have one. I'm gonna share some examples of marketing funnels that I started with in my business, the ones that I have in place now. And what are the elements of a marketing funnel in the online marketing space? We'll kind of go through what some of those are. And I do have some audio visuals behind me to, to kind of walk you guys through. Um, I also made a worksheet for you, and oh, it's right here. It's called the Funnel Builder, and I will put that in the comment section, the link for that. You can just download it from my website. You don't even have to give me your email address, and you'll be able to print that out and use that as a worksheet to help you build your own funnels. Okay, so I uh, hope that's a really helpful tool for you, so make sure you check that out. Okay, so when I first started in this marketing journey two years ago, I wanna remind you, if you haven't heard the podcast, I didn't know anything about marketing. I just married a farmer and I was trying to help him out. I was doing the newsletter and I was trying to figure out how to solve the problem of customer retention. And I just stumbled upon the marketing, online marketing space and started studying some of these people. Well, as I was listening to them, there was a lot of talk about funnels. And I didn't know what a funnel was. So if you are listening to this broadcast and you're in the same boat as, as I was, uh, I guess take heart because I didn't know anything about funnels two years ago and now look where I am today. So this is a pretty important concept because it really describes the process of the customer journey, how a customer enters your sphere of influence and how they move through your business and become a paying customer. So we're going to walk you through what a funnel looks like in just a minute, but just a general overview is that a funnel is referring to the process in your business that turns a, a website visitor or just a random person in the crowd into a lead and then nurtures them along into a paying customer. Okay, so um, before we jump into funnels, we really need to understand something called traffic which was another concept that I didn't really know about until I started studying online marketing. So in the marketing world in general, there's this concept of traffic and traffic refers to all the prospects that are out there that might possibly buy something from you. And there are a lot of them, right? And we divide traffic down into three categories, cold traffic, warm traffic, and hot traffic. And I'm not gonna go into this into too much depth because I think you probably get the gist of it, but I did draw a picture behind me of a funnel and um, there are kind of five stages of awareness 
that a prospect goes through as they move through your business. And it corresponds with cold, warm, and hot traffic. Okay, so at the top of the funnel, so this is the largest crowd, you have people who are either completely unaware of your product or just beginning to become uh, aware of a problem or a need that they have. So those people tend to fall into what I would call cold traffic. Okay, they don't know a lot about your farm. They maybe haven't even thought about how they wanna eat vegetables. Um, so they're not really aware of a problem manifesting in themselves. They don't have this deep need to suddenly start investigating eating farm fresh vegetables. Okay, those people tend to fall into the top of the funnel um, where the goal is to try to make them aware of your product. And then as they become more aware of your product, maybe they start shopping the farmer's market and they see your stand or they're watching Facebook and you know, one of your Facebook videos pops up and they just kind of see a little thing about you or one of their friends brings it up or maybe they become pain aware. Um, there's a problem that begins to manifest itself in their household. For instance, they get sick. They might, um, their kids might have some kind of a um, food allergy or uh, maybe they get cancer or they get really ill and they need to change their diet or perhaps they're overweight and they want to start losing weight So they start thinking about food and eating healthy uh, Maybe they have kids and now all of a sudden they're concerned about the types of food that, that, that they're putting into their bodies so There's a, a problem that begins to manifest in their household or in themselves and it makes them think about I need to find a solution How do I get healthy food? How do I get? Um, fresh tasting food in my household and then they begin to explore their options so from this large traffic this large cold audience we begin to see a few people that become warmer they start to manifest this problem or this need and they move down the funnel into the next section which is called consideration where they begin to consideration is kind of the next stage in the funnel where they start to look at how can I solve this problem they begin to research um, different ways that they could get fresh vegetables or that they could try to um, solve this problem of getting healthy foods back in their diet or force themselves to eat different kinds of foods they never tried before. Um, and they'll research things, they'll look into other farms, they might stumble upon a CSA, okay? So this is a smaller subset group of the bigger cold audience. They are now warmer, they're interested in learning about something. And then as they move down the funnel, you'll have some people that after they research this, they'll decide that they want to buy the CSA or buy something at your uh, a different product that you might sell and now they are a customer and a lot of times this doesn't happen right away right it takes a little bit of time for someone to be nurtured along this journey from awareness from being a cold audience to a warm audience and then finally to a hot audience where they become a buyer now a lot of people like just stop at the funnel right there once they've sold something and they're like I'm done they have finished the funnel but in reality, there are actually a couple more steps in the funnel that are down below that are even more powerful. And if you can get your customers to that place, you are going to get incredibly loyal people. And you're going to have a higher lifetime value um, from your customers. So those categories are, after you hit the buyer stage, like extremely hot is what I call the loyalty stage. And these are people that, um, that become really, really loyal to your product because you take the time to grow them. So you're not just giving them the product, but you do something above and beyond that causes them to feel really loyal to you. Now, we didn't always do this, but last year, I'll give you an example. Uh, I've talked about it before, but we started a pretty intensive and intentional CSA training program within our membership where we had a game plan, like I had a curriculum where I was teaching storage tips, I taught exit strategies for vegetables, I taught, um, I actually had CSA members come live with me onto a Facebook Live and teach different cooking skills. And we walked people through what I thought some of the important things were so they could succeed in CSA. And at the end of the year in our surveys, that was the number one thing that was listed in how they grew. They mentioned over and over again these tutorials and these trainings and how that was the best part of the CSA. So because we went above and beyond and we grew our customers, we taught them how to use the food so they wasted less, I think we kind of got a lot of people into this loyalty category at the bottom of the funnel um, because, and I think that may be one of the reasons our retention rate also went up so much.
And then at the very, very bottom of the funnel is like Nirvana land, if you can get your customers there. And that is called embat the ambassador uh, level. So at the ambassador level, these are people that are not just loyal to you, who don't just think you're really great and buy a lot from you. These are like the people that are your raving fans. They go one step beyond and they start talking about you to other people a lot. It's like they can't help it. They just want to share this amazing uh, farm with people and they become your marketing engine. So the more you can get people into this place, man, that really helps you collect more leads and more sales. And they also tend to be the people that buy your high-end products and buy over and over and over again. So these are the stages of awareness for a typical buyer as they move through um, a business, through, a, th through a, a customer journey. It starts at the top in this kind of cold traffic area where you have a lot of people. And as they begin to learn about you, some of them will stick around and continue to buy your products. Some of them will become um, even more loyal. Some of them will become raving fans, but the number slowly decreases, which is why you see the funnel triangle shape, right? There's gonna be fewer down here. So um, this is kind of a, a good thing to be aware of, that there are many different audiences in your funnel and that people will come into your business in different places in the funnel. And so our job, because customers are in a different stage of awareness, you may have some people that are problem aware, you may have some people that are solution aware, who are aware that there is a, there are several solutions out there to deal with their problem, and then you have people who are like your solution aware, you know, who want your farm, not someone else's farm. So they're all over the map. And we have to know where they are, uh, where the different customers are, and we have to have pathways, journey ways for these different kinds of customers to move them along. So that is what essentially a marketing funnel does for you. So it's a process of converting this traffic into a paying customer. Um, and there are a series of steps that a business will do to uh, like almost like intentional mechanisms that we put in place in our business to make sure that our leads slowly move along the funnel and get nurtured until they're finally ready to buy. Because if we don't nurture them, if we just collect a lead and never talk to them, they're probably not gonna move down here into the funnel. And they're certainly not gonna move down here. So there, there are some intentional things that businesses can do in their marketing funnel to make more of their traffic move farther down the funnel. And we're gonna talk about that um, in the rest of this training. Uh, your job then, and my job here in the winter time, is to sit back and kind of plan this out and to engineer the journey, okay? So I want you to think of yourself as an architect and you are trying to engineer the journey so that it's more likely that someone will move from cold to hot in your funnel. And that is called in the online marketing space, they call this coaching the conversion. And it may take um, several years for people to get to the bottom of the funnel. And you may have some people that never get to the bottom of the funnel and who leave your funnel and that's okay too. Uh, but I have had people that I um, got as a lead, oh, maybe like two years ago and they just occasionally bought vegetables for me through my online store. And just this year finally became a CSA customer. And the, it took them that long to warm up and turn into a hot lead. So you really do have to play the long game with some of this and the funnel helps you do that. Um, so why do we need a funnel? Uh, before I kind of draw one out for you. So there's a couple, there's actually four, four things I want to say here. Number one is that not everyone is ready to buy right away. So in a perfect world, I would immediately be able to talk to my ideal customer and I would get them to purchase my flagship CSA program. Okay, that's in the perfect world. But at $410 a pop, that's a pretty hard sell, if you think about it. I mean, that's, a, that's a lot of money to shell out if you don't know somebody. I haven't added value to them, they don't know me, they may not even like me, and it may frankly not be a good fit for who they are and for their style. So um, not everyone is ready to buy right away. I like to think about it, I once heard Don Miller, one of my virtual mentors, he talks about it like this. He's like, imagine 
going out on your first date with your husband or your wife and um, within 30 minutes they say will you marry me <laughs> and you'd be like whoa you're kind of a freak uh, get away from me right it's too soon it's too much too soon and I think that that's what we sometimes do in our businesses is that we go right for the jugular and we go right for the sale and it's too much too soon for someone they're like no I, I, I just want to date you can we just date for a while and so that's what funnels allow you to do. They, they give you an opportunity to build mechanisms within your business that allow you to essentially date your customer and get them to a place where they slowly buy more and then they buy the next product and then they buy the next product until they're ready to make that final commitment uh, of, for example, a CSA share. Okay, so we really have to honor the process that a customer goes through. Um, number two is that you're leaving money on the table if you don't build a marketing funnel for the reason I just mentioned before. Um, given enough time, eventually, quite a few people that are in your funnel will buy something from you. If they're not willing to do it right away, if you nurture them in the funnel and you take good care of them and you slowly add value to them, um, they will buy something from you. So if you don't do that, you're leaving money on the table and you're also missing the opportunity to grow somebody and change somebody's life. Um, I think it's also important to point out that sometimes people get distracted in the buying process. So I'm actually, it's, it's uh, uh, the end of November and I'm starting to shop for Christmas presents for my boys. And we're thinking about getting a foosball table. I have a six and a nine year old boy. And so I was scoping it out on the internet and uh, I found, you know, uh, one of them at one of the stores and I kind of kept it on that page. It was half off, it looked really good. And I thought, oh man, I don't know, I need to check with my husband. So I didn't want to make that buying decision until I talked to Kurt. So I left it open for like two days. I kept thinking about it and I talked to my husband about it. Um, so here's an example of how I was a lead. I was thinking about buying a product, but I wasn't ready to do it just yet. And then I kind of forgot about it for three days. And then all at the last minute I was like, oh, I need to make a decision. So sometimes that happens to your customers too, where they think about it. And then they just get distracted. Somebody makes a phone call or their kids come in and say, I need help on my homework, or they have to race off and take care of an errand and they just, they just don't get to it. And then it completely falls off their radar. So you need to have a, a mechanism in place that reminds them that you exist and that keeps coaching them along so that when it's finally time to buy, they're ready. Um, the third reason that you need a funnel is because every business, Every business needs TLC, traffic leads and sales, um, or customers, traffic leads and customers. So you need to feed the pipeline. If you don't have a system in place to collect leads, your business, your farm business will eventually suffer and it'll dwindle. And I know that that's always the fear that I, I still had it, um, and I especially had it in the last 10 years. Like, what if my retention rate goes down for CSA? What if the CSA thing is on the down, the downslide and people are no longer going to do it? I'm sure that some of you feel that way. And that fear is, is, is very real. And so, you know, there's, there's this desire on our part to make sure that we've got people coming in the door to replace those ones that we're losing every year with attrition, right? So, you need to have a system and a strategy to constantly collect leads and get people up here at the top of the funnel so that you can move them down. And if you don't have that, you're going to be in trouble. And finally, um, one of the things I think reasons you need to build a funnel is because once you do, it's awesome. It's like, okay, it's not completely like work free. Obviously I'm still doing stuff, but I, you know, I built the machine and now it works for me while I sleep. Um, I wake up in the morning and there are, you know, notices on my phone that so many people have signed up for my CSA lead magnet. And I'm like, oh, awesome. There's people entering my pipeline. That's great. So it just, it just continues to churn and work for you. And only occasionally do you have to go in and kind of update it and fix it. Um, so it's, it's so awesome because it frees up your time once you have it done and it, it just begins to create these leads for you. So those are kind of the main reasons why I think you really need to have a marketing funnel. So I want to kind of explain or show you an example of what the online marketing funnel looks like. Uh, so I'm going to just draw this out um, for you so that you can kind of see how it works in the online, 
an example of how it works in the online marketing space, okay? So let me just say, let's start out, maybe you saw a Facebook ad for something, okay? So it starts out with making a Facebook ad, or the other point of entry could be that your website, okay? So this is where things start. And maybe somebody sees a Facebook ad and it points them to what's called a lead magnet. Okay, so this is step one that a marketing funnel will have what's called a lead magnet. This is bait. Think of it as bait, all right? So a, an organization or your business needs to think about something that would be so valuable to your customer that they um, would trade their email for it and then they get to download it. Or maybe it's they'll get to watch a video, a video series uh, <clears throat> that's gonna help them in some way. So you come up with a lead magnet. So the Facebook ad talks about this lead magnet. People might go there and find it. Or the lead magnet is on your website and people find it there and they click on the button and say, here's my email. And then they get the lead magnet, okay? It gets delivered, let's say it's a PDF cheat sheet of 10 ways to use your vegetable scraps. I don't know, I just made that up, okay? So they get that as their lead magnet delivered to their email box and at the same time, um, they're taken and subscribed to an email drip campaign, okay? So uh, you pre-write like five or six emails that, that you kind of time and you tell the your email service provider I want it to go out every four days, the next one, the next four days. And so your customer then begins to get content from you. And these emails are really well written and they slowly warm up that audience. It moves them from cold to warm. And then at the end, you have some kind of call to action and you try to get them to buy something, okay? And for some of these people, it will lead to a sale and they'll buy it, okay? So that is, let me go on this side, that is the basic um, like map of a funnel and how it works in the online marketing space. Again, it starts with either a Facebook ad or just on your website, it points to um, a lead magnet, the bait, something that somebody wants. They go to an opt-in page where they have to give their email address. And then once they get that, give that, they get the PDF in their email box and then they start getting emails from you that you've already pre-written that begin to sell them stuff. And at the end, they probably they might buy it. And now you have a customer, okay? So that's um, the formula for, for a funnel in the online marketing space. Now I wanna give you an example of what that looked like in my business so you can kind of see how this might work for your CSA. Um, actually, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna show you how this works, how this works on you, because you guys are in my funnel and you came through my funnel because you're in my group. And let me show you how I designed that funnel. So for those of you who heard me on the Farmer to Farmer podcast, uh, that was at the top of my funnel. I had the podcast where I was um, exposed to a lot of people, there was a lot of traffic, okay? And before that podcast, I prepared a PDF, an email swipe file of the emails that I use to get this really insane retention rate from my customers in my CSA, because I thought that might be something you'd want. And so I offered that on the podcast and I gave the website address where you had to go to give that. You went to a landing page that had a pretty picture on it and a little box that said, get this if you give me your email address and you gave me your email address. So that was also part of my funnel. And then when you got that delivered to your bot, to your email, you've also started getting other emails from me. And I know that I'm, I think I'm dripping them out every five days. So it'll be about a month's worth of content. And all the stuff that I'm giving to you is just free, awesome goodness, like wisdom, my best of my best content. And I actually don't have anything that I'm trying to sell you at the end. But if I did, I would start dripping that out towards the end and kind of make you aware of some services that I might provide for you for a fee, okay? So that's an example of a funnel in action, okay? In my CSA, um, here's how my funnel works. 
Um, I have a couple of different ways that people enter the funnel. So on my website, I have a PDF that's called, Is CSA Right For You? It's also on my sales page. So if somebody sees that, there's a little section that says, hey, if you would like to find out if CSA would be a good fit for you, we kind of know the characteristics of CSA customers, click here to get the guide, Six, uh, how to know if CSA is right for you. And so if people click on that, they'll get that lead magnet, it takes them to an opt-in page, they get that PDF, and then they get subscribed to my email campaign. So I have created a CSA email drip campaign that has like 10 emails, and it's a combination of emails that give away like really awesome facts about, not facts, but like storage tips and hacks to help them get better as a, um, with their vegetables. But every now and then I sprinkle in some values language and I kind of start talking about CSA and how it changes people's lives. And towards the end, I'm giving a full out pitch. Do you want to be a part of this community? And then that leads to a CSA sale for some people. And at the end of that, people come out of the funnel and they either buy or they don't. And if they don't buy, then they're still you know, in my email list and I can try again later, okay? So I have a funnel for my CSA product and I also have a different funnel for people that might subscribe to my A to Z vegetable guide on my homepage. Uh, that funnels people through what I call the farmer's market funnel and that's really just teaching people how to use vegetables and it, the goal of that funnel is to get people to um, want to subscribe to my pre-order list at the farmer's market. So um, a lot of those people then become regular customers and eventually uh, they move into the CSA funnel because they get exposed to our food. Okay, so that's an example of how I've built two funnels in my business and they each lead to different products, okay? So now I want to move into like the steps for actually building a funnel for you. What are the things that you need to think about? And um, when I first started this a long time ago, I remember sitting down on the carpet and, and having a bunch of post-it notes and paper all over the place trying to kind of map this out. So I'm just going to kind of walk you through like the, my case study of how I handled my very first funnel. Um, so what I want you to do first when you're building a funnel, the first thing you want to do is list all the products that are in your arsenal. Okay, now I don't mean, oh, okay, I sell carrots and lettuce and rutabaga. I don't mean that. I want you to think about in your product suite, okay, what are the different categories of items that you sell? And I want you to list them all. So in my case, we have, we have people that come and buy farm dinners with chefs on our farm, okay? And they don't necessarily buy a whole lot of other stuff, but that's kind of a nice income stream. And we have people that are canners, okay? They like, they buy a lot of bulk stuff from me. And they're a different kind of beast, right? And then we have people who come to the farmer's market. And let's see what else we have. What's my other product? Um, I have the CSA, that's my big flagship. Um, and I'm spacing now. Oh, and I have people that are just in my private Facebook group, okay? So I have different products and I know I'm missing some other ones, but um, I want you to lay out all the different kind of categories of things that you sell, okay? That's kind of step one, because that will help you identify which is the most valuable uh, product that I want to try and move people to, okay? And you'll end up deciding to build a funnel for one of those products. Okay, step two is to clarify the goal of the funnel, all right? So you have to pick one goal, one call to action. What is the whole point of moving this person through the funnel? Is it, um, well, we can go through some different options. It's not always to buy something, okay? So in the case of um, this particular group, um, when you gave me your email address, my, my goal was to get your email address and to get you in this Facebook group. Okay, so that was the goal of the funnel. Um, and so there are some people who have gotten my email swipe file and are starting to get my emails but haven't yet clicked on the link to join my private Facebook group. Okay, so my goal is over the course of those four emails to try and get them in this group because I want to add value to them. Um, but you could have a different purpose. So your, your goal of your funnel could be just to get someone uh, to click I'm sorry, to, to buy your flagship product, okay? It could be 
to get them to buy maybe a lesser product that's going to kind of warm them up and get them ready to buy something more expensive. Um, it could be to complete an, an email opt-in page because you want to tag them a certain way in your uh, email service provider. It could be to join a private Facebook group. It could be to um, click on a Facebook ad uh, so that sometimes that's what you want people to do. So you really need to identify what is the whole point of this particular funnel. What do I need them to do? I need them to watch this video. I need them to um, download this PDF, whatever, okay? Then step three is to identify your target audience for your funnel, okay? And this is important. Remember, I can't put it back up here, but if you remember, we had that, the different stages of awareness. Um, you wanna know at what stage of awareness your customer is for this funnel. Um, because you're going to write differently to them. If they're, <clears throat> if they're kind of just beginning to become aware of this problem that they have, and then you want to you want to write a certain way in your emails, or you're going to use copy in your Facebook ad, um, or you're going to create a lead magnet that's really speaking to that particular pain point. So really identifying where they are in the funnel, um, how far along they are, it's going to help you uh, put together a more effective marketing piece, marketing collateral for them. So you just have to real quickly be like, oh, this product is for someone who's further down the funnel. It's, this is not for someone who's at the top of the funnel. Or this product, or my call, my call to action is for someone at the top of the funnel. Whatever it may be, you just need to identify that. Okay, that's step three. And finally, step four is you want to start to map out the elements that are in your funnel on a piece of paper. So I did this <laughs> literally on a giant um, piece of paper, a big poster board, and I had post-it notes and I was moving them around. So um, it kind of looks like something like this, where you'll, you'll put down your icons, you'll be like, okay, so I need a lead magnet. And you can just kind of put a lead magnet here and then put down some post-it notes of different ideas for the lead magnet that might appeal to that ideal customer that, you, that you're gonna target. And then you think about, okay, I need a drip sequence, an email drip sequence that Oh, like five emails that I have to somehow slowly over the course of that email I need to, to get them to a place where they want to do what I want them to do. So what could I talk about in each of those emails? Got to pick one thing to talk about in each email. And you try to start thinking about what those might be. Um, you can, you put together like, oh, I need a landing page. I need to create an opt-in page where they actually give me their email. So I'm going to have to design that. And then um, finally, you're also going to have to design, possibly have to design your form that they fill out or the Facebook ad at the top of the funnel. So they're kind of these elements, you just sort of need to figure out how are people moving in and out, all right? And then it's just a very like general, you don't have to get super microscopic about it, but just kind of get a sense of how are people moving. And then when they come out of the funnel, when they, when they buy or when the email series is done and they didn't buy, what do I do with them then? Uh, you, you need to kind of think through that. Are they gonna start another email series or am I going to try to get them to do something else or are they just going to sit in my email uh, service provider for five months and I'll never talk to them okay so you have to uh, think that through all right um, so those are the kind of the four basic steps and once you've um, mapped mapped that all out then you actually have to start one by one creating those different elements that are up here and I'm just gonna kind of walk you through each of those steps in a little bit more detail and then we're gonna kind of wrap things up. And I don't want you to feel overwhelmed because you're probably listening and going, I have no idea how to do any of that. And I was totally there. Um, and that's partly what I'm gonna be teaching you in this group. Week after week, I'm gonna be slowly breaking these steps down for you. We're gonna walk you through, like we're gonna do a whole session just about lead magnets so that you understand what those are, what makes a great lead magnet. We're gonna talk about how to build a landing page, what a landing page even is, and you know, great tools that are out there, easy tools to make them look beautiful. We're gonna go through all that, but this is just big picture so that you understand the general um, architecture of a funnel and the flow in the online marketing space, how it works, okay? So <clears throat> let's start out with creating the bait, all right? I'm just gonna give you a few quick bullet points about when you're creating bait. This is sometimes called a content upgrade in the online marketing space too. So if you ever hear that word, you know what that means. The bait or the lead magnet, it's called a magnet because it attracts your ideal customer. So as you try to figure out what a lead magnet would be, 
to pull in these prospects and get, get them in your sphere of influence. You want to ask, what would my ideal customer be attracted to? What is it that my ideal customer would want? What is what would be so valuable to them that they would be willing to trade their email address for it? Okay, now people are pretty protective about their email addresses these days. It's not as easy as it used to be to get it. So you really need to think about something that that would be attractive to them. And a lot of times, at least what they what they coach you to do out in the online marketing space is to come up with something that's so valuable that people would probably pay money for it. So like my A to Z storage guide, A to Z vegetable storage guide is a great example. I think it's like 54 pages. It is a beast, but it is beautiful and it is awesome and it is comprehensive and it's like every vegetable and fruit, just about every vegetable and fruit, and it talks about how to freeze it, how to store it, how to prep it. I mean, that's an awesome guide to give to someone and people would probably pay five bucks for it or whatever but I offer it for free and someone's like, yeah, that sounds awesome, I'll take that. So that's a really great example of a lead magnet that it took a lot of time to make that, but now that I have it, it's really performing quite well. It's my best lead magnet out there. And the other thing about lead mag magnets um, is that it needs to align with your uh, customers, with the goal that you have for your customer. So. Another great example for this would be like I made the lead magnet, the, the six questions that you should ask before you join CSA or is CSA right for you? I forget what I called it. Okay, that particular lead magnet is so awesome because only a person who's interested in a CSA would download it. It's not going to be something that a person who just likes to eat vegetables every now and then would download. So it really qualifies my leads. So you don't want to make something, you don't want to make a lead magnet that's too general, uh, and you don't want to make a lead magnet that really has nothing to do with your business, okay? So, you know, don't make a list of the top 50 kid-friendly places to go and visit in Toledo if you're a farm. Like, that's, you might get a bunch of moms who are like, oh, I want that, but they're not going to end up coming back to you and buying your vegetables because they're just going to come for that freebie because um, it's a nice freebie, but they're not necessarily going to buy vegetables from you. So you want to have alignment with your lead magnet and your business and, and your ultimate product and goal that you want to get out of that funnel, okay? Um, I also want to say here too that the email address is so incredibly valuable. I know a lot of people are probably skeptical about that. You think email is dead. I'm here to tell you it is not. Um, everybody still uses their email to access passwords and all kinds of stuff. I mean, it is alive and well. And if you know how to nurture your lead and you write good emails and you add value and you add great content to them, people will open, not every email, but they'll open a larger percentage of them. And that's really all you need. The thing about owning someone's email is once you have someone's email, you own them as traffic. Okay. Otherwise, like if I go on Facebook and I pay for a Facebook ad and try to get somebody's eyeballs on my content, I don't own them. I don't own that traffic. Facebook does. But the minute they give me their email address, I now own them as traffic and I can send them emails that are for a very specific audience if I've segmented them a certain way and I'm gonna know how to talk to them, okay? So trying to own the traffic is really, really valuable, really important. Okay, so that's about creating the bait, the lead magnet. The landing page, I didn't actually draw that on here, I probably should have drawn that. So um, the lead magnet takes them to a landing page which is basically a website page. Okay, and that's where the, it's also called an opt-in page out in the real world or a, sque a squeeze page is how they'll often refer to it in the online marketing space because it squeezes an email out of you. So the landing page is different than a website page. Okay, this is not you go into your website and you make, create a new page and you stick a form on there. That's, um, that's a little bit different. Um, a landing page is like something that you create in using a special tool. It's like everything that's on that page is designed for one thing to get the person to do a very specific call to action. In many cases, give me your email address. Okay. So, um, designing a landing page is uh, something that you learn in the online marketing space. Uh, there are tools like lead pages, which I'm going to, I love lead pages and I'm actually an affiliate for them now and I'm going to share them with you in a special um, demo 
probably not right away, but in probably in the next five or six weeks, I'll show you how it's done so you can see what a cool tool it is and how easy it is. But Lead Pages is a land, landing page builder and it helps you uh, create these beautiful websites. They're different, they're, they're not hosted on your website, they're different from your website, they connect and they allow you to make these really beautiful landing pages that cause people to actually want to convert and give you their email address. So um, sometimes a landing page though is a sales page, which is a little bit different than a landing page. A sales page has the purpose, the whole purpose of a sales page is to get somebody to actually buy your product. So I have a sales page for my CSA. You can go look at it at sharelegacyfarms.com slash box and you can see an example of a landing page sales page. Okay, and again, those are created very easily with a drag and drop builder um, in a tool like Lead Pages. So those are really, really helpful. Once I learned how to make those, I just felt like my my uh, funnels looked so much more professional. Um, the third thing is the email sequence, and I know I talked a lot about this on the Farmer to Farmer podcast. I feel like words are what sell, and so having a uh, a nurturing sequence that guides people along. Okay, they just they just met me. They just got my guide. I just gave them something really valuable, and they're like, "Wow!" They're feeling gener. They're sensing my generosity, and now I have an opportunity to continue to teach them, to con continue to add value to them. I want them to look forward to my emails. I want them to be like, "I can't wait to see what she's going to share with me next time," and that's kind of the goal of the drip campaign. The rule of thumb that I tend to follow when I write emails for drip campaigns is I try to give three, three emails that are giving value, giving away something, and then one, the next email will be like an ask. So three, it's a kind of a three to one ratio. I don't always follow that, but as a general rule, that's kind of a good formula to follow. It should not be, you know, selling you something, selling you something, selling you something. Uh, that turns people off right away. But if you have a, a ritual of, Solving, a, tell, you know, identifying a problem, solving it for them, identifying a problem, solving it for them, and identifying and solving a problem for them again, and then asking them for a sale, that goes over much better. <coughs> so these email sequences can be, they could be as short as like two emails. Um, I think typically mine are between five and ten emails long, and kind of depends on what I'm trying to get them to do. If it's a a really big deal it might take a, a long time a longer time to create these micro conversions and get them closer and closer to what I want them to do so I am NOT going to go spell this out in detail right here this is a whole separate uh, sub training on how to write great emails and I think what I'm probably gonna do is just pop in from time to time and do f like quick five-minute email hacks and tips um, so that you slowly build your arsenal of email uh, email copywriting tools and you'll kind of begin to start using those uh, right away in some of the stuff that you're writing some of them have a lot of impact immediately and then finally uh, the Facebook ad is the next thing that you'll have to kind of think through and I, again I'm not going to go into great detail about this but if, if, face, if the Facebook ad is at the top of the funnel where people initially first meet you and then get pulled into this lead magnet, you're going to have to think through what's that Facebook ad going to look like and what's the, what should the image be, what should be the headline, the, really paying attention to the copy um, that goes in the post section, are you going to have a, a call to action button, are you not, um, who's your target audience going to be, I mean all those things you want to start thinking about, but that's an, a whole other step. And I usually don't worry about that until the very end when I'm building my funnel. Because sometimes I don't use the Facebook ad as the top of the funnel. One thing I will say here, um, Facebook ads is a little intimidating at the beginning if you don't know what you're doing. I actually took a course on Facebook ads with Rick Mulready. Um, and it was good. I recommend it. Um, but I am of the mindset that if you don't have a funnel in place, if you don't have these other elements down here, and you're doing Facebook ads, you are throwing your money away. Not that Facebook ads are incredibly expensive, but I don't think that they're highly effective unless you have a process for moving people along the journey and getting them closer and closer uh, to wanting to buy, moving them through those stages of awareness. 
I think what happens a lot of times is that people um, see your ad, they might initially come into your sphere of influence, and then if you don't do anything with that, if you don't consistently talk to them or add value to them, uh, you're going to be like a stranger to them. And when you pop in suddenly and try to sell something, it's going to feel disruptive to their experience. So having a funnel is really, really important. Um, Finally, I also want to say that having a great email service provider is really important in the online marketing space. In order to work this funnel magic, you need to have an email service provider that can do drip campaigns. I think most of them can. Um, you need to have them be able to uh, segment your audience based on, you know, if they click something in an email, and if they click a certain link, you can tag them as, hey, they clicked the link about the CSA, and then they'll get tagged as a CSA lead. So some email service providers will do that, some of them won't. Some email service providers will remove tags um, based on actions. So if they bought something, let's say I have someone in my CSA leads list, and they actually go through my email and they finally buy, they click on a thing and they buy, and now they're in my CSA, um, a good email service provider will actually remove the tag and so that they're no longer getting the CSA leads list anymore. And now they're, they're tagged as a CSA buyer and they get a different set of emails. So you really want to have a robust um, email service provider that can do that for you. The one that I really love is called ConvertKit. And I've tried a lot of different ones. I ended up on this one because of its user friendliness. And I love it's, it has just a really great automation kind of visual that helps you see the funnel and see how people are moving. Um, I'll do a demo one of these days so that you can see how it works. Um, but it's a really terrific tool and I find it really affordable too. I think I pay, uh, I'm kind of in the middle tier and I pay $49 a month for it. And that's up to 3,000 subscribers. I think there's one below the $49 level if you don't have that many. So um, I'm an affiliate for them too. Just to be totally honest, um, but they are super awesome and I'll make sure that I link up to that and do a, a demo sometime in the next couple months. Okay, final thoughts, I'm done. Um, the reality is that <clears throat> whether you know it or not, you have a funnel right now in your business, okay? You are all operating with a funnel, even if you didn't know you are. Uh, because you all currently have some way of collecting leads, whether it's getting them to write down their email address at the farmer's market. Maybe you do it with pencil and paper. Um, maybe you send out coupons or put coupons out in the local paper, um, or you put Facebook ads out there. You have some kind of a strategy you're trying to execute to get people in the door. And you have different people who are in different stages of awareness in your funnel. You've got people who have been with you a long time who will buy anything that you offer. You've got people that are kind of middle of the road and you have people up at the top of the funnel, okay? So you all have a funnel. The problem is um, it may just not be functioning as well as it could be. And so that's what I love about learning about the funnel and learning the different pieces that need to be there in order for it to really chug and really produce for you. You want to leverage the heck out of your funnel. And if you don't have one, you can't do that. So um, sometimes we have bottlenecks in our funnel. So that's once you start building these different pieces, you'll notice, um, hey, I've got, I've got a lot of really good strategy for people who are in the middle of the funnel, but I really don't have a lot going on for people at the top. I don't have a mechanism that's pulling those people in and moving them down here. Actually, what happens a lot is that most businesses, this is a statistic out there, most businesses have a lot of mechanisms in place for people who are already big time buyers, the bottom of the funnel, and they often have some strategies for the top of the funnel, but they don't have a lot in the middle. They don't have a way to kind of move those people down farther into this sacred ambassadorship you know, zone. So um, as you get more advanced, you'll start to kind of pay attention to where, where am I currently struggling? Where are those bottlenecks in my funnel and what can I do to fix them? So the goal, let's say in like two years from now, today, the goal is that you will have a funnel for every stage or category product in your business. 
Okay, that I think that could be a worthy goal. Um, maybe by the end of this year, by the end of May, you could have one funnel in place for one product, and that would be a really awesome accomplishment. And I'm going to try really hard to get you there. So I want you to download that cheat sheet, uh, that worksheet that I made for you, the, the funnel maker, and it has some questions in there that you can start going through. Um, I think the last page might be a little advanced and tricky for some of you, but I, I know you can at least start working on the first two. And then in upcoming sessions on this training, uh, uh, training group, I'll be walking you through some of the other elements of how to put this whole picture together. And it's all going to slowly start coming together. Okay, I promise. So, um, maybe your call to action could be to try to identify one funnel that you want to create by the end of May. Pick one product that you feel like, I need to create a process to move people to that product, to want to buy that product. And then maybe that could be um, <clears throat> the call to action by the end of this week. You know at least what that funnel will be, okay? <clears throat> Our next training next week, pretty excited about it. We are going to walk through another really key step that I think is important in the early stages of your business, and it's all kind of part of this funnel building process. We're going to be talking about the value ladder and why you need to have a value ladder in your business in order for your funnel to execute the best. All right. Hey, guys, let me check and see if you have any questions. Um, let's go to discussion. Don't even have this open yet. Let me know if you have any questions. This is kind of the chance to do that. Except that my page isn't opening. What's going on? We have this awkward pause. I'm so sorry. My computer is freezing up. Um, while we're waiting, I just want to ask you to please feel free to invite other members um, or farmers that you know into our community. Um, you can tell them about the email swipe file and they can go there uh, and get that. It's sharedlegacyfarms.com slash email download and then I'll get their, their email address and I'll be able to invite them into the group. So. Um, here we go. I'm back. Let me see if I have any comments. Stacy, dating is a great metaphor for the funnel. Looking forward to learning more about lead magnets. After watching your deep dive on surveys, it seems like getting that data would be pretty key to figuring out the right lead magnet for your biz. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Because you're going to learn so much about what your um, ideal customer values, what's most important to them. And that's going to tell you especially the questions, if you can put some questions in those surveys about like, what is it that you want to learn? I think that was one of the golden questions in my 2016 survey. Um, how can we help you? What are you most excited to learn? Or what were the three things, what advice would you give to um, new rookies who enter the CSA? And we got three tips in every answer. Um, and that one question alone gave me a ton of ideas for how I could train or what I could teach uh, newbies who came into my system, what information they would really want to know. Um, Ford, thank you, Karina, you're welcome. Um, Julie uses mind mapping. Yeah, that's kind of the another tool that's out there. I don't personally use the official mind mapping tool, but it's very similar. Evan says, thanks for all your great advice and support. Of course, I'm so glad, awesome. Well, like I said, um, I will be back next Thursday with our next training, which is going to be all about value, the value ladder. You guys, this is a really good one. I had never thought about it, and when I first learned about it, I was like, holy cow, um, this is important to create. So we'll see you next week. Have a great, uh, a great weekend. Talk to you soon. Bye.